G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. So a really, really interesting story and I remember hearing about this uh, with XRP back in 2017. So there was talk that XRP would have its own smart contracts uh, platform and again, it was just something that was talked about it and I'd never really heard too much about it since but finally, finally it's here. So it's the Flare uh, network. And basically what this story is saying is that Flare is looking at integrating with Ethereum. So you're going to be able to have smart contracts on the XRP sort of network uh, that will be like cross-chain. Well, not like cross-chain. That's exactly what they're going to be. They're going to be cross-chain with Ethereum. And what it goes on to say is that basically XRP or the FXRP, which is the Flare, could be used as a scaling solution for uh, Ethereum. So that's really, really interesting news because, you know, I hate or love XRP. Say what you want. They are extremely fast. I don't know if there's a faster uh, network out there at the moment. I could be wrong, but as far as I know, I think XRP has the speed uh, down by uh, quite a length. And XRP is quite backed up at the moment. So what I like here is uh, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse said that Flare will offer users the best of both worlds. From my point of view, Flare is combining the best of XRP, very fast settlement, Ethereum, smart contracts and Avalanche for consensus, which helps extend XRP's utility and allows developers to create smart contracts for new cases like lending and DeFi. So it's a bit of a scratch my back, scratch your back kind of thing. So the Flare network can help with scaling uh, for Ethereum and Ethereum can then bring uh, you know, DeFi to the XR, XRP space. So I think that's really, really interesting. And I, I, I truly believe this is the way of the future. There's not gonna be one platform that's just gonna you know, rule everything. I think Ethereum is, you know, it's, it's the standard at the moment and I don't think that's gonna change any time soon. I don't think ADA's gonna take over in this kind of cycle. I don't think Polkadot's gonna take over in this cycle. I think Ethereum has it down pad. And really the only thing that's gonna stop Ethereum from being the standard is themselves. They have to get ETH.2 rolled out and they have to get some scaling solutions rolled out. If they can't get on top of those and you know, fairly soon, then yes, different story. I think, you know, some someone like uh, you know, ADA polka dot uh, they could definitely come through you know zillica and you know eos and uh iota you know there's a number of other platforms out there that would love to take the ground at least some ground from ethereum and if ethereum can't get on top of again scaling and eth 2.0 pretty quickly you know get rid of those uh horrible uh transaction fees that they ha have at the moment they're just way too much and particularly on the DeFi stuff at the moment you know, I got onto uh, Synthetics Network the other day, and it was still thirty dollars uh, American, thirty US dollars for me to do one single transaction, uh, and that was me trying to claim my rewards from staking. My staking rewards weren't even thirty dollars, so I couldn't even do it. I just had to, again, leave them, and that's a real killer. That that is going to stop uh, major adoption. You know, big business and all that can afford that, no worries. But the average day Joe. No way, we, we couldn't use it. So that is really the only thing that I think is going to get in the way of Ethereum is if they can't get ETH 2.0, you know, the staking part out. And particularly, not even staking, I know everyone's super excited about staking. I think scaling's the bigger issue. I would push back the scaling to get the, oh, sorry, I would push back the staking to get the uh, scaling on, done first. But, you know, a lot of people are really excited about the staking. So that is the first part of Ethereum 2.0. Uh, is the staking part and then the uh, scaling part comes a little bit later from uh, what I've read. But XRP, they are obviously very, very fast. And as I said, as far as I know, they are the fastest uh, cryptocurrency and transaction speed. They could go a long way to helping ETH's uh, scaling abilities, scaling problems. So very, very interesting story. And I'm going to keep an eye out on that. For anyone who's holding XRP, I don't think you can get your flair at the moment. You don't have to do uh, anything special for it, uh, to my understanding. There are certain platforms that are saying they're going to, uh, so I'm not saying Binance, I can't remember that there are exchanges saying 
send your XRP to us uh, and we'll give you the flare tokens. Uh, be very, very careful about doing that because they're gonna take some of the tokens. I'm sure if you have them uh, on some kind of uh, cold storage wallet uh, even a couple of hot wallets might do it maybe but i'm sure at some stage like the ledger or the trezor or something like that uh, it'll be done for you and you won't have to do anything so yeah don't rush out and be moving your xrp onto uh, exchanges trying to get your flare just yet i'm sure if you wait a while uh, we'll find out what the good deals are all right next this is really interesting as well so it takes an estimated seven nuclear plants to power our Bitcoin mining. So that is the issue with Bitcoin at the moment. I mean, you know, one of, it's not the only issue, and I'm a Bitcoin fan. But number one, they got the same issue in scaling uh, and their transaction fees and things like that, so they need to get on top of that. But this is the other big one. The amount of power it takes uh, to mine Bitcoin at the moment is just phenomenal. Uh, it, it's something that uh, really needs to be addressed now. Yes, there's green power and all the rest of it, but I. I'm guessing because it just gets harder and harder and harder to mine this stuff that in you know times to come we won't have enough green energy to uh, get on top of uh, you know yeah the costs of trying to mine Bitcoin I am thinking would Bitcoin Bitcoin core consider moving to a proof-of-stake option that would be something really really interesting I'm not even sure if they could but I think that would be a much better direction for the head for them to head in the long term. But again, that's just my opinion. Uh, I, I'm not, you know, a full tech head, and maybe that's not even possible. I don't know. But I think uh, that would be, you know, something that they should definitely be looking at. And I know it's been talked about before. I've read some things uh, with people mentioning it, but never anyone go into any detail. But I think proof of stake would be a much better way for uh, Bitcoin uh, to go in the future because yeah. The price of mining it at the moment uh, to the environment, the cost I should say of mining it to the environment, it's just too high. And I don't know if green uh, energy will be able to get it all done. But we'll have to wait and see. All right, let's go over to the charts and have a look. We're still just ranging. Again, we're just stuck in this space. Nothing has really changed between that 11,000, you know, 300 ish range to 11,000 sort of 900. We really are just, we keep bouncing in and out of there. And again, we're back here again. Uh, and as I said, I suspect we're probably gonna be in here for a while, but you know, I can't tell you exactly what's gonna happen. If we do drop down, I am expecting us to either, you know, find some support off the 50 day or, or this uh, benchmark down here, the $10,500 level. But I've said that before, and I don't wanna to continue to go over the same thing. But just saying, we're still trading in this range. We haven't moved out of it, and yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Again, there's uh, a speech coming from uh, Jerome Powell from the Fed on Thursday about you know what's going to happen with uh, the Fed and you know the uh, the stimulus and you know there's talking about them raising inflation. So maybe Thursday might be the catalyst uh, for something to happen with Bitcoin. But at the moment, just bouncing in and out of there. Lastly, we'll go over and have a look. So the market cap, 356. So wow. We're down quite a bit. So we were up around 380, nearly 390 billion. Uh, and yet we dropped to 380, we dropped to 370, we dropped to 360, and now we dropped to 350. Uh, and look, it's troubling times. And when Bitcoin's not doing too much, people panic and sell and things like that. And there is a number of articles out there at the moment, uh, you know, with people talking, they expect Bitcoin to go down further. Uh, and again, particularly if it hits that $10,500 level, you know, we'll see this number drop considerably again. But me, I believe in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in the long term and I'm happy with my positions. And should Bitcoin go down to 10,500 and obviously everything else will bleed at the same time, I'm all right with that. I'm not going to be worried until really we maybe hit this resistance line. As long as we stay above here, we've broken out uh, to the upside of, of that ascending wedge, so I'm happy. And again, really, it's once we go below the 200 day moving average that's that i would i would definitely be concerned there but again we'd still be setting higher lows not so much here but from down here and we'd be still roughly on an up trajectory so yes you know if you're not used to cryptocurrency uh the volatility can be uh a bit much to take so again you know you get these big massive moves like this but then sometimes you're going to get big massive moves like that that's just the way it goes Anyway, that's it from me. 
stay safe, be kind to one another. There were gains out there to be made. I didn't make uh, too many, at least not enough to bring my portfolio up and tie the uh, total went down, but that's life. Be kind to one another, and I'll see you next time.